Welcome to this video where I'm going to be walking you through two options on how to dry and cure your onions so that you get them ready in the best shape for long-term storage so you can have them on the pantry shelf for the coming months. Now, if you missed part one of this video series on how to know when your onions are ready to harvest and we go through the harvesting period, then I'll have the link below for you. I'll link to it at the end of this video. You're gonna wanna make sure that you check that video out. Quick recap. When you are curing your onions for long-term storage, the type of onion does matter. So sweet onions have a much shorter shelf life, even when they've been cured properly, than some of your longer-term storage onions. The variety that we have and works really well for us just on the pantry shelf is a copra onion. So selecting the right spot to cure your onions is really important. You don't want it to be in direct sunlight, even though we want them to dry. If they're in direct sunlight, then you do run the risk of actually sunburning your onions. So we don't want that. So for both garlic and onions, when you're curing them, what we want is a warm area that has really good circulation and airflow. So we are on my back deck, which has Southern exposure here in the Pacific Northwest, finding an area that's warm can sometimes be a challenge even in August, but it's also under cover. So the direct sunlight never hits this part. Um, about one o'clock in the afternoon, I'll get direct sunlight that will come to about here, but it never actually hits that part. So that's really important. And the way that our house is situated with the natural breezes, this has great airflow that comes through for ventilation. So a couple of really key important things when you're picking where you're going to dry and cure your onions. You've got a couple of different options and I've got both of them laid out here so that you can see on how you're actually going to be curing your onions. I have a couple of options that we use and I'll kind of go through the pros and cons of both of those on how I decide what structure I'm gonna be putting my onions on during the curing process. The first step is to do hanging wire like I have here and the second is to pick a window screen. So here I just have regular fencing wire. This is wire that you can buy pretty much any big box store or hardware store, farming supply store. We use it for our hog panels uh, when we are moving the hogs and doing different pig panels. What you wanna make sure is that it's sturdy enough to hold the weight of the onions because if you get a lot on there, chicken wire itself is probably not going to be heavy enough, nor are you going to be able to actually thread the stalks through with something that's a small hole like chicken wire. So this type of wire works really well. You wanna make sure that you've got them spaced enough when they are hanging so that you do still have that airflow that's going all the way around. One of the advantages to doing this type is I can put the onion upside down like you see here. And so the stalk is pointed all the way down. And so that's going to be drawing the moisture away from the bulb of the onion. And it's gonna help them dry and cure faster, a lot of people feel. Now, these ones actually have bent over because the stalks were bent over. That's how we knew they were ready to be harvested, one of those signs that we look for. And so even though these ones aren't completely upside down, you still don't have the stock directly overhead, so that's going to help to speed the drying process as well. And then this is great because it's not actually taking up table space, so to speak. So, so that's pretty much the main advantage to using this type of drying system is that you do have that stock, which is upside down, and a lot of people just feel that it's more beneficial and faster on the curing and drying part. One of the drawbacks though is it's gonna be more time consuming for you to individually hang and thread each onion through the wire. So if you have a really large crop, this may be something that you just don't have the time for, but this is great because it really does provide ventilation all the way around. Now my second option, I've got an old window screen, but you can use a window screen or you could use any type of wire shelving, anything that you lay it on that is open so that we have that air circulation. And this works best if you are doing a large amount of onions at once and you don't want to individually thread them through some type of wire hanging device. So 
So here you can see I just have a window screen on two saw horses. You do want to make sure that it's something stable. This is, does get heavy when you have quite a few onions on there. But this is great, like I said, if you're doing a large amount and you just need to be able to lay them out. One thing is you do want to make sure that you do still have ventilation area. You don't want these two scrunched together. And ideally, you have the onions spaced out enough that you've got airflow around them. Airflow is super important because if you do have any that do start to turn before they get dried and cured, if they're touching, any type of decay, mildew, mold, that type of thing will quickly spread from one onion to the rest. Next. So you do want to make sure that you've got that good airflow and that they are separated. So don't cram them up too much together. And ideally, this is somewhere that you're going to be able to come and inspect it. You don't necessarily have to look at them daily, but you do want to keep an eye on them as they go through that curing process, especially if you have really high humidity or you're going to be having a lot of moisture coming through and it's not going to be really dry. Just to make sure that everything is curing, you don't have any that are starting to mildew so that it doesn't spread. I happen to only have one old window screen, so that's why we're doing both method methods. Plus, I get to show you a couple of different options by doing it this way. How long do you need to let them cure? Well, it's going to depend a little bit on your weather. Like I said, if high humidity or you've got a lot of rainstorms and a lot of moisture in the air, then you're gonna need to increase that curing time because it's really crucial that these are totally dry before we try to move them indoors and do any type of long-term storage with them. Here in the Pacific Northwest, even in the middle of August, which is when the typical time for me to harvest my onions are, sometimes, we have difficulty getting some nice sunny days with some warm temperatures and I have to let mine cure for about three weeks. Normally it's about two weeks or 14 days is how long it's going to take your onions and your garlic to cure. You'll be able to tell because the stems, so all of these green stalks here are going to be completely dry and brown and withered because you want this part has to be totally dry as well. And then the outer skins, all of that dirt will just become completely dry and you can blow that away. I always err on the side of a little bit longer if I'm not sure. It's better to have them totally dry than to bring them in too soon and risk having that moisture, which of course moisture is then going to breed bacteria and break them down that much faster. You're going to want to make sure that you are subscribed if you're not already and click that little bell so you get notified as soon as our new videos are released because I will definitely, when these are ready in a few more weeks, film how we go about braiding them and prepping them, cleaning them up before I take them in and then storing them for long term. And if you enjoyed this, you are going to love both my new book, The Family Garden Plan, which you can't even get until January 7th, but don't worry, I'm gonna be talking about some really fun pre-order bonuses coming up. But we have October 2nd, the Organic Gardening Workshop. If you have not signed up for the Organic Gardening Workshop yet, you wanna get over to organicgardeningworkshop.com, pop in your name and email and get on that early bird registration list because you guys, it's gonna be epic. If you enjoy these videos, we are gonna have six days worth of video content all around organic gardening for free. I'm talking companion planting, crop rotation, natural pest control, vertical gardening, raised bed gardening, composting. Pretty much you name it, we got it covered. And if you're on that early bird registration list, I'm gonna be releasing early some sneak peeks and some bonus videos. So you wanna make sure that you're on there. Let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed this video. And if you've got questions or would like to see other things about gardening, please let me know so that I can create videos that will help you grow your own organic food. Thanks so much and I'll see you guys in the next video.